Welcome to a special episode of the G5 Hive, and boy, we have something exciting for you all today. We have a very special guest joining us at Midlothian High School. He was named a first team all region and first team all metro. He was also named to the VHSL Region 5B all academic team. He spent a prep year at Fork Union Military Academy, and in a game against Delaware Valley University, he had six tackles, three sacks, four tackles for loss, and a block punt. He attended the University of Buffalo, where he made an immediate impact as a freshman, appearing in 11 games. He had three tackles and a forced fumble against UMass his freshman season. He appeared in 21 games for the Bulls before deciding to transfer to Kent State. This year, he is having a breakout season for the Golden Flashes and causing havoc on opposing offenses. He is one of the top edge rushers in the country with a havoc rate of 14%, with 14 total quarterback pressures, four tackles for loss, and three sacks. And he doesn't just eat the other team's quarterbacks. He has 24 tackles, 15 solos, nine assists, and an interception on the season as well. He is six foot four, 245 pounds. He is from Richmond, Virginia. He wears number 11 for the Kent State Golden Flashes. He is Cameron Olds. Welcome to the show, Cameron. Appreciate you for having me, man. That was a perfect intro. Like that joint was legendary. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we had some. We had some of your highlights. We had some uh, some old, um, old school Julian Edelman. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Tough. yeah. It's tough. We, we we try to we try to capture some of the greats and, and program history in those intros, as well as uh, the that's players true. we are interviewing as well. Well, let's kind of start at the beginning. Who introduced you to the game of football? What you know? What caused you to want to start playing football? Um. I've been I've been around football and sports my whole life. Um, my I, I I can say my my pops um, introduced me to football. Um, he played football in um, in college. He played for University of Tennessee Martin. Um, I got uncles who played football. Um, so uncles played football for Baylor. Um, so I've been playing football since I was five years old. So you know what I'm saying just it kind of kind of like growing me like it just happened naturally um so did you play any other sports growing up yeah so like actually basketball was my first love um basketball was my first love uh i played basketball i played baseball but i stopped baseball a little bit i kind of blame my parents for that uh they took me out of baseball i wish i would have stayed in baseball i would have been crazy at baseball though uh basketball did, did they always put you in the paint Cause your size, or yeah, that's how that's how just high school basketball works. Like if you if you like over six foot, you just gonna play in the paint. Like you just gonna play a four or five. But I feel like I can. I'm six four, like six three, really. I feel like I can play like three. You know what I'm saying? Three in the NBA. I feel like I can guard one through five. I got the strength to guard. The boy's seven foot, but I feel like I can guard him a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> Uh, so you went uh, from Midlothian High School to Fork Union Milica Military Academy uh, to D1 football at Buffalo, and now you're at Kent State. Can you kind of walk us through the differences between those levels of football in terms of training and playing football? Um, let's start, I guess, with the differences from Midlothian to, to Fork Union. Uh, yeah, so Midlothian is uh, it's in, it's in Richmond, Virginia, so it's uh, like – just Richmond, Virginia is great at football in general, and people wouldn't know. You know what I'm saying? It's just a, it's a, it's a good area um, for sports in general, but like football, and it's just, it's, it's, it's hard to make it out of Richmond. So the guys who, the guys who, who make it out of Richmond and, and playing D1 football or in the NFL, that doesn't even tell the half of the story of, of the, of the ballers in, in Richmond. So it's just like Richmond football is like that. That probably is one of the best areas I say can prepare you for college football. Um, just given the the talent level and and, and 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 the coaches around the area and just the the football the football aura in in uh, in Richmond. So um, I feel like the biggest difference would be from high school to Fort Union would be, um, I went to Fort Union as like prep school because I had COVID, um, 2021 COVID year, I graduated high school and that messed up my whole crew. And like, I was, I remember coming out of high school and I had, or coming out of junior year and I had like a bunch of visits 
going to like Clemson, uh, Florida State. It was it was a bunch of schools like that who um who were interested in me, but COVID happened and all that kind of went down the drain, and then the transfer portal opened. So like me and my family just made a uh, a decision to, to just put me in a prep school, uh, Fort Union. So the difference between Fort Union and and it's really the the intentionality you have to have like in your work, like with lifting and and, and football football aspect. Because the way Fort Union military um, works is it it kind of gives you the blueprint of college football. Okay. So that's how they try to make it so they can transition you smoothly. So you won't catch many guys coming from Fort Union who who can't last at a, at a college at a D one college because they try to prepare us for that um, with the with the work ethic, with the with the conditioning, with the um, just the schedule in general. So you know what I'm saying, sun sun up to sun down. People people don't see all all people see is you know what I'm saying. We play on Saturday. Yeah. They don't see the the sun down the, the sun up work. You know what I'm saying. So, so um, when you when you got to Buffalo and now Kent State, I'm assuming Fork Union helped you help prepare you a lot for that. But kind of what what were the differences from going from Fort Union to college? Um, so at Fort Union, uh, like I said, I went there for post grad. So we kind of played we played one D one school, we played Wagner, and then the rest of them were like um, community colleges or or a D D one uh, D one double A or D two or D three. So the the biggest difference really is like the talent level, the skill level. Um, but obviously the, I feel like the speed of the game is, is the same. Um, it's really just the, the, the talent level. I would say the, the speed of the game changes from high school to Fork Union, and then it really stays the same throughout Fork Union and college, but Fork Union definitely uh, prepared me for college and, and just having that, having the mindset of you, you got to work with God and nothing is given to you. Um, and I was taught that from a young age, so you know what I'm saying it just came natural to me. But some guys, some guys, it don't come natural to them, but they get it right away. Like it just, it just clicks for them because that's what that's what this sport demands, and and that's what football demands. You know, you gotta you gotta love it. You gotta put your time into it, and and I feel like that's with anything. You just gotta put your time into to anything in life, and and you'll just be successful. So having, you know, you mentioned going through the recruiting process uh, in, in, your, in your high school year in COVID. So you, you kind of gone through the recruiting process a few different times. Um, what what did you learn over the course of all that to kind of when, when you when you entered the portal and ended up going to Kent State? What did you learn from those first times that you were able to, to apply to uh, making the decision to go to Kent State? Man, you, you learn a lot. You learn a lot. Um, just the just the business aspect of. Uh, of football, um, you know what I'm saying. Growing up, you only you only see the football, you only know football, and uh, you only know what your coaches tell you. But you really don't know the the business aspect. You really don't know the social media, um, upholding a certain image on social media. You really don't know, you know what I'm saying. Coaches texting you here and there, and it it might not be it might not be the truth, or it might not be right or wrong. You know what I'm saying? It's just Sure. It's just the business aspect. And I feel like that's really the biggest difference. And and that was the biggest the biggest change I had in my process entering the transfer portal was I know I know all of this. I, I've been through I've been through the recruiting process. I've been through it with COVID. I feel like COVID was the hardest recruiting year, you know what I'm saying, anybody could have ever had if they experienced it. I feel like they would agree with me. So like just entering when I entered the transfer portal, um, it was just like much better. It's I my eyes were way clearer. Like I didn't it wasn't blurry at all. Um I feel like out of high school eyes were blurry. Even my parents, because they 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 were a big part of my recruiting process. They their eyes were very blurry. And I feel like in the transfer portal it was just it wasn't wasn't blurry anymore. I just I saw past all all the BS. Um, so it wasn't 
it wasn't really much I could get fooled on or wasn't much I couldn't get. So what advice would you give to an aspiring high school player about the recruiting process? Um, I, I would say just like rely on rely on the people around you, rely on the people you trust uh, and, and, and trust what they have to say uh, as well as trusting your, your, your parents or whoever, whoever raised you um, and just follow, follow your heart. Um, not necessarily, not necessarily your mind because your mind might tell you different things, but you, like you got to really follow your heart and you might not feel it until you feel it, but just follow your heart is what I would give high school athletes today, especially with social media growing and social media is crazy nowadays now. So it is. <laughs> follow your heart and, and, and trusting the people and, and follow people you, you trust in and, and you love because because they're the ones who, who really care about you and care about your best interests. So, what uh, what ultimately led you to choose Kent State to further your education and football career? Um, and it's it's crazy because Kent State kind came, came out of nowhere. It came out the woodworks, and uh, I give all praise to the to the Most High Power, um, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, he kind of. He just he he put me right here and and he he gave me a chance to to stay to stay within um a group of five so I just took it and ran with it uh it's nothing it's nothing really I could could say it's just I just got put in this position and uh, I got an opportunity Coach Burns and this coaching staff gave me the opportunity to um to go out here and play football play the sport I love so I was just like. Like, you know what I'm saying? Why not? I'm I'm playing I'm playing this game I'm playing this game for for free. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. What else I got to lose? You know. So at uh, at Buffalo you wore number thirteen, and at Kent State you're wearing number eleven. Does the number eleven have any significance for you? Um, no, nah, it just kind of gave me eleven to be honest with you. But I I like eleven. Like I feel like I rock it. Um. I don't, know, I don't know how y'all feel about it, but I feel like I, I, feel like I look good in 11. Two, two number ones, right? It's better than one number one. You're two number ones. Exactly. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It get different. Um, if you could pick any two defensive linemen or edge rushers to train with and learn from, watch film, et cetera, uh, who would you pick and why? Um, I feel like two guys that I would pick um, to train with and learn from would be Brian Burns and uh, Miles Garrett uh, right here in Cleveland. Actually, I need to get in tune with that because I'm literally right here in Cleveland. I need to get with Miles Garrett and whoever can get me with Miles Garrett to train with, I, you know what I'm saying? I would like to train with him. But I feel like Brian Burns, I feel like I play like him in a sense. I feel like my game kind of models him, uh, just, just how he moves and pass rush wise and and how, how he was in college and then miles Garrett is just a, a freak of nature so he is <laughs> i feel like the way the way he trains and his mentality to how, how he goes about things i feel like i had the same mentality um just from the outside looking in so um and he's just a freak of nature both of them are a freak of nature um so i feel like those two will be the ones i want to train with when you're studying film and watching other edge rushers, uh, which things are you paying the most attention to? Uh, I pay attention. I pay attention to their to their different get offs. Everybody has a different a different way they they rush the passer. Um, I, even now I have a different way of the way I rush the passer, and I'm still trying to find different intricates um, and different pitches. I like to call them. Uh, that I need to use and, and utilize. So the biggest thing I look at is is their get off, um, where where their hands are, um, their hand placement and run blocking, uh, their feet on contact, um, their feet their foot their footwork within their different pass rush moves. Um, so that, that's really what I what I look at. And when I'm watching football in general, I I'm, this is not 
normal. I really watched the whole the whole picture. Like I said, I'm a I'm a football fanatic. So like I watched the whole literally the whole picture. Like I'm watching I'm watching the quarterback in the pocket to the you know what I'm saying, the five oh lineman, you know what I'm saying, then then where the ball moves. So then I'm watching the D B. So it's like then I'll go back and then I'll watch the DNs. If it if it's if it's a sack on that play or if it's a hurry, I'm like, okay, that's a good move, you know? So stuff like that. Yeah, so many people, you know, the casual fans, they're just watching the ball, right? Uh, yeah. But but when you like you go back and watch a specific position all game, like you, you learn so much more and you see yeah. things that you've never seen before because you're not yeah. you know, most people just don't watch that. And that's what I tell. That's what I try to tell. Like the 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 freshmen, the the young guys on the on the um on the team here, or my little brother, I try to tell them like, you you got to watch football, like. You gotta watch football as well as play football, cause you can't you can't do nothing. You can't be good at anything. You can't be great at anything without practicing, without doing what you're supposed to do. So you can't be good at football if you don't play football. You can't you can't lift you can't lift a certain amount. You can't condition a certain amount. You have to play football. You can't just watch basketball and think it's going to translate to watching football. No, you have to watch football in order to get good at football, you know? So, and and that's really what I try to relate to my little brother or the young guys. Like, whatever position you play, watch that position when you're watching football because it's just going to do nothing but benefit you. Absolutely. Uh, when you're watching film uh, of the offense, and in particular offensive linemen, what things are you looking out for or paying the most attention to? Uh, I pay attention to how they how they set how they pass set in the first quarter, and then their pass set in the fourth quarter. Um, I try to differentiate the two. That's the first thing I look at, and then the second thing is um, whether he's a low puncher or a high puncher, or whether he just gonna give me his chest, and then I could just go through him at that point. You know, so like that's really what I look at when it comes to um offensive linemen and 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 how they go about their business and, and you can kind of see like you really see uh the true demeanor of offensive linemen when when you watch a film in the third quarter. You know what I'm saying? The third quarter is when you know what I'm saying you, you tired, you coming out of halftime and you, you're a little tired, but you know what I'm saying we we're gonna see how you work then, you know? So just just seeing that, you know what I'm saying, See, seeing if they finishing blocks like they did in the first quarter, you know what I'm saying, seeing if they doing it in the third quarter. That That's the type of stuff I look at. So it's just the game within the game. So When when you're watching the film and, like, you see someone, like, you, you find a tell, right? Like, they, yeah. they, 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 you know, they do this and then this is going to happen. Like, I don't know, do you get, like, excited for that? Or, how, you know, what what is that feeling like? I, I kind of – uh some guys, some guys get excited for that. Some guys look at that um, and just and, and take it and run with it. I kind of, I kind of play, um, I kind of give them the benefit of the doubt a little bit. I just like if they if they if the tackle's in a two point stance and he's always in a two point stance and pass plays, I'm not going to necessarily think it's a pass play because he could be in a two point stance and he could still give me a base block. So I'm not going. I'm not going fix my mindset to think that it's going to be strictly pass when I know darn well I can get a, a base block. I can get a run block out of this set. So I really don't look too much into that. But obviously it is a, it is the tell of the tape. Like if if I do see it out of four games, every time that tag was in a two-point stance and, and his knees a little bit and that back knees a little bit back, and I know I know it's go time. I know it's, it's time to pin my ears back. So – it's, it's it's stuff like that, but I really don't necessarily fix my fix my head on that. Like I don't. That's not a thing I really look at. What do you uh, feel is your main strength as an edge rusher? I feel like my main strength as an edge rusher. I feel like my versatility. Um, I feel like the fact that I play multiple positions throughout my whole like football life. Like since I was five, I played. Played running back my whole life, up until I was in eleventh grade, and then I played middle linebacker. Um, so just my my versatility, like me me knowing different things within football, 
just helps me at edge rusher. Because I feel like if you know what the what the guys around you are doing, then it makes your job even more easier. And I feel like as an edge rusher and as a D lineman in general, it can get misconstrued that you have to that you don't have to know what what the other guys are doing on the field. Because it really it really helps you if you do. Because now you know what certain plays are coming. You know what that guy's doing behind you. So you know you can't do a certain, you know what I'm saying? So you can't mm-hmm. jump in the B gap and you know you got the C gap. You know what I'm saying? So yep. that that's really my, I feel like it's my versatility for real. For, uh, what was an area of your game that you worked on the most uh, this past offseason? Um, just my intentionality with um playing playing the position uh deep defensive end. Like my first my first year playing defensive end was um out of Fort Union when I came to Fort Union. Um Coach Robeson, uh my coach at, he was at Fort Union. So he really he switched me to um to defensive line and then I had a coach coach uh Philip Merlin. I had him. He he really introduced me to um to the different techniques of D line, and it I was raw back then, and so this this past these past two years I've just been just getting comfortable playing defensive end, and and just this past year is just working on hand placement and 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 different my footwork and within my pass rush moves and and really because like. Pass rushing is a is a is an art. It's a it's a skill that is necessary to to play D line, and it really is like a specific skill that you have to focus on like every day. And it's it's you got to be intentional about it. So that was really what I what I was working on all all season, um, and throughout throughout this whole season. So so right now it's it's Kent State's bye week. Um, can you kind of walk walk you know the listeners through how the preparation and what you do training wise and, and football wise for a bye week is different than like a, a game week? Yeah, so a bye week is just like getting your body back. Um, it's you have you have bumps and bruises. Uh, everybody's hurt around this time. Literally everybody. Like, if, and if they tell you they're not hurting, they probably lying to you. Um, but um. It's really just about getting your body right, um, keeping your mental and and your emotional um, state right. Um, can't get too high, can't get too low. Um, just almost not taking not taking a step back from from the game, but almost taking taking like a like you know what I'm saying, pulling your toe out of it a little bit, um, just to just to get uh, a sense of. Of, of normalcy, uh, a, a sense of normalcy in, in your life, and the bye week is really the time to, to to get your get your life back straight, um, get your body back right, and, and and get your mind right to to finish the season all strong. So that's really the the mindset of uh, this football team, and that's the mindset I have going in. So. As we mentioned uh, during the introduction, you're having a really a breakout season here in 2024. But I wanted to give you an opportunity to shout out some of your teammates. Who are some folks that uh, that that uh, the fans need to know about and look out for at Kent State this season? Yeah, I mean there are a bunch of guys, and I mean if you, it's really not it's really not much you can you can say because with the eye in the sky don't lie. It's, it's about film. So, and that's what, and that's what I always resort to. And like, I feel, even I feel like I haven't, I haven't done enough. I feel like I haven't done enough. Like, like you saying I have a breakout season. I feel like, like this is, this is nothing. Like I need to do more. I need to do way more. So it's just, it's just about being intentional with, with your film, being intentional with your technique, being intentional with self critique. Um, because, I feel like there's no bigger there's no bigger critique than myself. So and I and I try to tell the young guys that. So I feel like I feel like all the guys that are succeeding like like Kyle Thomas and and, and, and Tommy and uh Krishan, I feel like I feel like they are big critiques of themselves. 
So it just you play you play better and you play more freely because can't nobody tell you what what you did wrong or right because you know what you did wrong and you know you you beat yourself up about it to fix it and you know you just got to respond you know so it's just simple stuff like that. I know, I know for me, like, you know, you guys are getting ready to start uh, conference play and, you know, I'm excited on the offense. I would say, you know, to see Tommy and, and Kai and Aiden Harris and, and Luke and, and uh, Chris Sean, man, like, uh, it just seems like, you know, those go, those guys are going to really get going here. I mean, like, um, the receiver core, core is crazy. And I feel like, and Tommy's just getting, Tommy's just getting loose. Like he kind of had, he kind of had his, his, his his gray area a little bit. Um and I just feel like he's out there, he's playing freely. He's he's playing he's playing like like I got I got nothing to lose. Like I'm out here playing football. Like this is the game I love. Like and I feel like that's that's what everybody and anybody should be playing like. Um like like this is your last time on the field. Like like I I've been playing this since I was a kid. So like this is fun. Like it has to be fun out there for you. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, absolutely. The defense, I'm looking forward to you and Steven just wreaking havoc on those yeah. opposing quarterbacks. Yeah, we just got to – and that's and that's another thing. Like, with defense, we just got to play as one. Everybody do their 111th, and everybody trusting that everybody else is going to do their 111th so it all can come together. And, like, I feel like it might not look like it, but I feel like we was in every game these five games, and it's just, you know what I'm saying, one – one guy here or there, or you know what I'm saying, one play here or there, or one penalty, one penalty here or there. So it's like it's like that 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 notch has gotta click for some guys. And uh and sometimes only five, you know what I'm saying, starts that starts that click. So I feel like we're going in the right direction. Um I feel like the coaches are handling everything right, so I'm excited. Excited for these next seven games. If someone has not seen you play, what one game would you recommend for them to watch? Um, I don't know. I really, I really don't know. Um, yeah, I, I really don't know. I, I would probably say, I, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you to be honest with you. Um, I guess it's a motor too, because like I said, I I still feel like I haven't played my my my, my best game. Like I feel like this is the the floor for me. Like so, I just have so much room to grow. I have so much more to get better on, and um, because this is just the floor. So I really don't know what game uh, I could tell somebody to watch, and and I'd be proud of it. You know what I'm saying? So it's more of just so just keeping my head down and, and, and working because I don't, you know, so I never know when it could be my last nap. So if, if you could replay a game, is there a certain game that you would replay? And you can go all the way back to high school. And if you would, like, why would you replay that game? Um, I feel like Tennessee. I'll replay this year specifically. Um, back in high school, probably all of them. I feel like I feel like I could have. I feel like with my knowledge now, and and with how I am now, I feel like I could have played so much, so much better. Especially at the middle linebacker spot. Like I was playing middle linebacker in high school, so. I feel like I could have made so much more plays just based off my knowledge of the game. Not not my speed, not my strength, but my knowledge of the game. So probably every game in high school, to be honest with you. What opposing offensive player would you say was the toughest for you to go against and why? Um we're gonna say we're gonna say Nico um from Tennessee. Uh just because just because he he was sitting in that he was sitting in that pocket and he and he was throwing cold in there, and uh and he almost didn't he almost didn't didn't care that he was gonna get hit that play, and uh and if he was sitting in the pocket and the pocket did break down which it did that game, um he would take off and run, 
and he will still look to pass. And you don't see that from a freshman quarterback um, a lot. So I, I'll probably say Nico, and, and obviously he's still got he still got a ways to go. Uh, he's just a freshman. He's just getting started. So um, but I, I'll probably say Nico after watching that game. Do you have a particular routine that you have on game days or a particular song or artist that you like to listen to? Uh, I have, I do, I do have a particular routine. Um, I, I try to stick with the same routine. I feel like all athletes are superstitious in a way. Um, but, uh, I know some, some artists I like to listen to is, a uh, Lil Papa. Um, that's some artists I like to listen to. Um, I listen to young boy here and there, but, um, mainly, mainly Lil Papa and uh, Rod Wave. I like to get relaxed. I listen to Rod Wave on the on the bus ride from the hotel to the stadium, uh, just to relax my mind. So that that's really my routine. And then when I get to the stadium, it's, it's it's go time. You know what I'm saying? It's time to time to get right. So so this season, you talked about it a little bit. You got to play in Nayland uh, Stadium against Tennessee, and you also got to play in Happy Valley against Penn State. What were those experiences like? Man, those are like once in a lifetime experiences, and uh, and and people don't understand. Like you, we grow up watching watching those on TV, and to be able to play in that in that type of venue, to be able to play in front of that many people, you know what I'm saying? Who 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 don't know you from a can of paint? It's just crazy, and it's a it's a different experience, um, and it's a great experience. Um, like for me. Like my favorite, my favorite um team growing up was Tennessee, so and to play in Neyland Stadium was crazy. Like I'm on the I'm on the sideline singing Rocky Top. But that shoot I, after the first time I'm I'm kind of stopped singing Rocky Top because you know that game got out of hand quick. So, but um, it was it it, it was great. It was once in a lifetime um opportunity. Once in a lifetime, just it, it was just perfect. You know, hopefully those. I wish those. The outcome was was a little bit different, but you know what I'm saying. It's, it's a great experience, and uh, it was a great experience for the young guys. And they not they never gonna play in a in, in a stadium that's that's much more packed than that. That's that's a better environment than that. You know, so it was like kind of the baseline. So I feel like that was great for us to have that, and I feel like it's great for us going into Mac play also. So. When you're not playing football, what do you like to do? Uh, I like I like to watch uh, baseball. I watch sports a lot. I watch baseball. Um, I play I play video games here and there, and then that's that's, that's pretty much it. I, I like to just hang out with the guys, um, go out to eat, um, relax. You know, just just chilling with the guys, man. Enjoying enjoying each other's company, like. It's the big that that's that's the biggest thing. It's like you just not here to play football. You're not just here to go to school. You're not just here to get a degree. You're here to build relationships. So I'm I'm big on that. Just spending time, spending time with your guys, spending time that you go to work with every day. So that's that's really the, the you you uh you playing the new EA Sports College football game? Yeah. I actually just got on the game. But um yeah, I've been playing it. I like it. I like it. Are you so, PlayStation or Xbox guy? PlayStation. PlayStation. Right. Got you. What are you? Uh, I'm a PlayStation. I have not, I, I haven't bought the new game yet. I got to buy a new console first. That's what's, because I have a PlayStation 4. I don't have a PlayStation 5. Oh, yeah. Um, I just got so I haven't bought a PlayStation 5 yet, but I plan to. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so obviously, you know, we hope to see you playing on Sundays in the future. But if you weren't playing football, what would you uh, see yourself doing? I can't see myself not playing football. I'm going to be playing on Sundays. But um, I probably would like to stay within the game. Uh, so stay stay within sports. Um, I probably I probably would be talking about sports somewhere um, and, and trying to get paid for that. Um, so that's probably what, I, what I'd be doing. What's, uh, what's your favorite meal? What's your favorite thing to eat? Um... I love my mom's mac and cheese. 
but the my, probably my 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 dream meal, like the last meal on earth, if I had to choose, would be fried chicken, cabbage, and mac and cheese. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a uh, who, whose chicken do you like the best? Whose chicken? Yeah. You have a favorite place, or your mom's, or? Uh, no, nah, I don't really. I mean, my pops cook, cook, cook some crazy, some crazy food. Like he, he, he cooks. You know what I'm saying? Just, just know he cooks. If you know, you know. But uh, I really don't have no favorite, no favorite chicken spot necessarily. Um, but I do like. I'm a big fan of breaded, breaded chicken. Like. I'm not really a big fan of just like naked wings. You know what I'm saying? Just wings that don't mm-hmm. have bread on them. I like I like that crisp uh, aspect of a, a chicken. So, well, if you if you're ever in North Carolina, man, you gotta check out Smithfields. That's that's my favorite fried Smithfield. chicken spot. It's called Smithfields Fried Chicken and Barbecue. It's it's a chain, um, primarily around like the Raleigh area, okay. but um, yeah, it's it, it's good stuff, man. It's definitely yeah. my favorite chicken. Yeah, I gotta go visit that one time. Smithfields. It's called okay. Smithfields. Their barbecue is pretty good too, but their their chicken, like to me, is just unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, if you could sit down and have a conversation with any three people of your choosing, they can be dead or alive. Who would you choose and why? Um. Well, for starters, one person I I, I would like to have a conversation with would be uh my my grandmother uh on my dad's side, my dad's mom. Uh, Grandma Louise, I probably want to talk to her. She she passed away uh, when my pops was a young age, um, so I, I just really wish I could I could talk to her. I I, I hear a lot from my family members that that I I kind of resemble her and that that I had that I act like her. So I I, I really want to talk to her and um, and just just talk to her and, and, and fellowship with her. Um, I feel like I feel like I missed out on that, but she's living through me, and um, and, and we here now. So uh, another person I, I would like to meet uh, LeBron. I would like to meet LeBron, um, and then Roger Goodell. I'm gonna say Roger Goodell for the immediate immediate goals. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Roger Goodell. If you had to tell an aspiring high school player what the hardest part of playing college football is, what would that be? Um, just the consistency it requires every day, um, not just on Saturdays. Um, like the consistency in practice, the consistency in, in the in the classroom, um, and being intentional in in your work when while you're in practice. You know, and it's all about it's all about the small things, and and we can all get better. And I'm and I'm continuing to get better with just being intentional within the small things in life, because um, the small things in life matter. So, um, I just one thing I I tell high school athletes would be beneficial to in college would be hard. It's an acronym. It's uh, hard stands for handle adversity and respond and dominate. Um, I just feel like you gonna you gonna have adversity um, coming in college. You just gotta you just gotta handle it and respond and then dominate. You gotta respond to it the right way and you just gotta dominate. So just just handle the hard, you know. Absolutely. Um, if folks want to support you, you know, in in today's world, that's super important. Um, you know, with, with NIL and, and, you know, showing love for, for the athletes of your favorite school, if folks want to support you, how can they do that? Um, they can support me by, by just, I have a, I have a influencer. Um, I just started influencer. Um, I got some shirts made for me, uh, with my name on the back of it that could influence me. Just follow me on Twitter, um, reading, reading, reading interactions or follow me on Instagram. And that's really, that's really about it. Um, just, just watching, just watching me and and supporting, supporting me. That's that's the biggest, the biggest thing anybody could do. You know what I'm saying? Just support. And I feel like we all need support. 
in his life. All right, uh, let's get you out on a fun question here. Uh, Coach Burns comes in and says, no need for pads today, boys. Grab your running shoes. We're doing laps. What position group does your mind go to? You think, hey, it's these guys' fault. The O-line. Okay. The O-line. Just because, just because they're, they're, they're a little bit bigger than everybody else and, 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 and they don't want to, and they don't want to run. So I would assume that it would be their fault that we're running. (laughs) Well, uh, you know, a a couple, uh, I don't know, been a couple weeks ago, I guess I, I was having a really rough day the day before. Um, I had a, I had a super early doctor appointment that morning. I walk, you know, walk out of my doctor's appointment. It's like, I don't know, I get done like 8 a.m. And, and I look at my phone and I have a, I have a, 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 a message on my ex account. And it's not the G5 Hive account, it's my personal account. Mm-hmm. And um, it was from Cameron. And, you know, and Cameron, I guess the day before we had posted some stuff about the season you're having at, um, at Kent State. And, and Cameron had, he just, basically just sent a note saying, thank you. And, um, that, that little message meant a lot to me that day. I, like I said, I was having a rough day and, you know, just, I was sitting there thinking about, I'm like, you know, this is like that, that message is why we do this. Like why we do this show, um, to promote you guys, promote the G5, promote the, the players in the G5. And, you know, you, like not only did you just take the time to say thank you, you sent it to my personal account, which mm-hmm. I don't know, just it just really spoke to me. Um, I actually teared up a little bit that day, um, and so you know, thank thank you again, Cameron. Um, I, I I shared the I shared the story with your dad, and um, you know, and that, I think I asked you, I, I said something to you, like, and you were like, well, that's just the way I was raised, and so I shared that story with your dad, and your dad said, now you're gonna make me cry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, you shout doing out it. to you and your parents, man. Like you're just, just an, an awesome human being. Um, and, and we need we need more of you in the world. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Uh shout out to you and, and everything you're doing. This this G five, like it's it's big. Um, because like like you said, you, you do this for us to 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 create um to create some 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 ways for us. Um so it just it's it's big time seeing seeing different group of five guys who who are jumping on the scene and it's just everybody doesn't get that you know so absolutely like the national media doesn't really care about the group of five they they prove to me they prove that time and time again whether yeah. it's the, the the AP polls or you know mm-hmm. like the Heisman stuff like I don't understand like like yeah. Ashton Jenty keeps this up and he doesn't win the Heisman. That's just like, that's yeah. criminal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I you know, saw- but because he plays in the group of five, they don't, they don't, you know, necessarily give him the respect that he deserves. But- yeah. And, and football is football and, and there's ball players everywhere. So, and it's just like, you, you just doing a great job and, and, and showing that and, and, and making it and making it known um, and confirming it. So I appreciate you for doing that. And, um, Absolutely. Yeah. Appreciate well, uh, you. Here. Thank you for taking some time out of your day to spend with us. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate you. If you're uh, watching on YouTube, please hit that like and subscribe button. And if you're listening in podcast form, please rate and review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Thank you all for your support. And until the next time, we are the G5 Hive. Oh.